Here we have the BenQ HT2050A, which is easily one of the most popular projectors on the market, and with its impressive color accuracy, contrast, brightness, and a host of other solid features, there's a lot to like about this relatively affordable projector considering what you're getting. The only question is, can it really deliver? And after you get it, what can you expect from daily use? For starters, the HT2050A has a native resolution of 1080p with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but unfortunately it doesn't support 4K. This projector features a DLP chip to help enhance image quality, so it is susceptible to some rainbow artifacts at times. With 2200 ANSI lumens, this projector can get surprisingly bright, and I noticed that unlike many competing projectors that tend to oversaturate the greens in their brightest mode, BenQ have delivered a projector whose color at maximum brightness still looks very realistic. Because of its brightness, it can stand up in ambient light, and though it's not advertised as a short throw projector, it performs similarly and it's capable of giving you a 100 inch image at just over 8 feet away. It has 96% Rec. 709 coverage, with more than 1.7 billion colors generated per pixel. This gives you a crisp image with surprising color accuracy, contrast, black levels, and shadow details, so you get a solid 3 dimensionality to your 2D images. I think overall the image is among the best in this price range. It also has a 6x speed RGB RGB wheel, a 15,000 to 1 contrast ratio, and automatic gamma control which gives you darker blacks, solid grayscale, and vivid colors with good saturation. When compared to the similarly priced Epson 2150, I found that the HT2050A has more impressive dimensionality and depth, better black levels, richer colors, and better motion resolution. Even more, it supports ISF color calibration for ISF day and night modes, although you might need to pay a technician to do this for you. The 2050A comes with different picture modes as well. The brightness mode maximizes the brightness of the projected image for rooms with ambient light. The cinema mode is best used for viewing films in darker environments, and I really like the well-balanced and accurate color saturation even before it was calibrated. Vivid TV is useful for rooms with low light levels, and I was really impressed by its elimination of the green bias while the shadow detailing and brightness levels were solid out of the box. Game mode is suitable for being used in the living room, and I really enjoyed the lower lag time of 16.6 milliseconds, which is an improvement over the original. The 3D setting supports full 3D with DLP link glasses only, and I noticed that it handled 3D specific issues well with little crosstalk or 3D related motion artifacts. I also thought that the 3D images lost less brightness than competitors like the Optoma HD26 HDR. BenQ gives you a vertical lens shift of up to 10%, which allows you to adjust vertically without impacting the resolution too drastically. And I found this very impressive because it's an uncommon feature at this price range, especially for DLP projectors. You also get both a vertical and horizontal keystone correction, which is another upgrade over the original 2050. The zoom range of 1.3 is fine, but I did notice that it falls behind the Epson 2150 here. Because of the vertical offset, this projector performs well when ceiling mounted or on a low table. You will need to tilt it downwards or use keystone corrections on high shelves, and in my opinion, this can cause a slight reduction in brightness or soften the edges, and it does add some artifacts to the fine patterns. The lifespan of the 240 watt UHP lamp is an average of 3500 hours in normal mode, 5000 hours in economic mode, and 7500 hours in the smart eco mode. With economic mode activated, I did notice that it reduces the brightness a bit, and it limits power consumption. Smart Eco Mode maintains the maximum brightness in normal mode while dropping the power during darker scenes for a better black level, which I thought functions almost like an auto iris. One slight downside to mention is that you will find replacement bulbs can be more expensive than competitors. The HT2050A has a portable lightweight frame at just over 7 pounds, meaning that you can move it between rooms. It has a built-in 10 watt mono speaker which outperforms expectations and is perfect for a backyard movie night or a medium sized room. It also has dual HDMI ports, which work great for streaming sticks and gaming consoles, and it comes with separate audio modes for cinema, gaming, music, and sports, and I appreciated the customizability of the equalizer settings in the user mode. So is the BenQ HT2050A worth the buy? Sure, there are some cheaper options out there, but you'd get what you pay for. Now, if you're sensitive to rainbow artifacts, I would suggest the Epson 2150, which is an LED-based projector. However, if you're looking for a solid sub $1,000 projector with plenty of features, good brightness, and impressive color accuracy, contrast, and overall picture quality, then I think the BenQ HT25A is a solid choice that outperforms at its price class, and it's great for the traditional home theater setups. 
Even more, it comes with a better than typical three year warranty for the unit, which gives you peace of mind. One big downside is that it doesn't support 4K. So if you really want 4K and you don't mind investing more to get it, you can check out the BenQ HT 3550. But that's just my opinion. Let me know your guys' opinions in the comments. For links to updated pricing on all of the items mentioned, check out the description. And if you guys learned something or you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you like short, informative tech videos. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.